Hey guys, Pete here. Was reading about the renewal of Westworld for season two this morning and found out there was a bit of news about the prequel for Game of Thrones. I'm gonna talk about what some of the prequel options are so that we can talk about what we'd like to see. Stick around to the end of the video to find out about the book giveaway I'm doing right now because I want you to win. Not much spoilers, if any, in this video, so let's jump right into it. The interview that I'm talking about was with Casey Bloys, who is HBO's president of programming. The interviewer asked, have Game of Thrones prequel talks with George R.R. R. Martin yet yielded a specific idea at this point that might get put into development? Mr. Bloys responded, I would say it's still kind of preliminary ongoing talks. There are areas we are exploring, but I wouldn't point to anyone and say, this is what we're going to do. So not much of a reveal, except when he's been asked the same kind of question before, he hadn't gone as far to say that they were even considering what it would look like. I can't find the original article I'm thinking about, but in his previous statements were along the line of, well, we would love to do more Game of Thrones on HBO. Then he would pivot to the fact that Dan and Dave aren't interested in doing another show. They've been working on this nonstop for a long time at this point, and they, they basically came out and said that if they decide to make a prequel, they won't be involved. At the Emmys, when the press asked George R.R. R. Martin about it, he said there was plenty of material, but that their sole focus right now is to finish the original series. If we look at what Bloy says at this point, it sounds a lot like the prequel will happen since why would he mention ongoing talks if that might come back to bite him later? This isn't a big surprise since Game of Thrones has become an institution for HBO. I've guessed they would do this for the sheer amount of material they have to work with and the fact that if it's done well, there's really no reason why they wouldn't be able to have the same success. So I think it's basically confirmed because that's what I want to believe. Obviously, there are things that could happen that could kill the project, but I'll be ignoring those because I'm a fan and I don't want it to end after next year. What would a prequel focus on then? I'm going to lay out the most likely candidates, and then you guys can tell me what you think. First things first, the world that is built up around the main story that has become the TV series Game of Thrones is huge. There's almost an infinite amount of possibilities. For this video, I'm going to exclude the ones that are super cool but wholly unlikely to be made. The first potential candidate would be the Tales of Duncan A. This is a collection of short novels about Sir Duncan the Tall and Aegon V Targaryen, who is a boy when the series begins. There are three published novellas, which is a fancy way of saying a short novel, that were just recently repackaged into an anthology called A Knight of the Seven Kingdoms. Why is Duncan Egg the most likely candidate? Well, for one, there are already books, and for another, it is related to the world that show watchers know, while being removed enough by time that it isn't the same characters just when they're younger. Would these stories make for a show that's as exciting as Game of Thrones? That's a bit of a hard question to answer because they're definitely different. The Duncan Egg stories that have come out to this point are focused on one event. There's a story that has a beginning and an end in each one of the novellas. It's not arranged in these cliffhanger scenarios that continue from one story to the next. At the same time, they are all tied into the big story and even though there are only three published, Martin says that he intends that it would be about 12 of them all together at the end. In the timeline, I imagine, based on what we know about these characters, towards the end is where it would really tie into the things show people only would really know about. We don't know a lot about the end of Aegon V's life because Martin has kind of made this like a blank spot on purpose, but what we pretty much know is that when Rhaegar is born around that time, Aegon is trying to hatch a dragon egg, and that this leads to the tragedy at Summerhall where his and Dunk's lives come to an end. End. I think the stories are good and like where it's headed. I'll admit it isn't perfect though. The two central characters are probably not as compelling as those we have in the show right now when you first meet them. I mean, Egg is a kid. Due to the success of the show that's out now though, this would be a project on a massive scale and the material is there to work with. I was giving away the collection version of the three Dunkin' Egg novellas in my first book giveaway and received a lot of comments complaining that people don't want this to happen. Mostly for the things I just touched 
touched on. I think they are generally well received by fans, but like I said, they're definitely different than the main series. The second option is a prequel that would be right before the current events of A Game of Thrones that we know. Robert's Rebellion, or the War of the Usurper, went down just about 18 years prior to the show's current timeline, or when the show starts, I should say. It involved characters people know already, and has a lot of potential to fill in some of the backstory people have been theorizing about for a very long time. The actual war itself only lasted a year or well a little bit more than a year but there's plenty that happens in the lead up that could fill plenty of seasons without problems. There aren't too many downsides on this one except that we already know the outcome but I guess that would be the same with any prequel of anything. Even if you know who wins the Battle of the Trident it would still be amazing to watch. People have long said that this would make a great movie which I don't disagree with at all, but I don't see where stretching it out into a series would take anything away from it either. It has fan service in that people get to see characters they know doing things they only read about or watched, you know, heard about in the TV show, and it has potential for some major nerd service if it addresses some of the theories about what was going on with, you know, the major houses and different things before the tourney at Harrenhal actually happens. One thing that we can't ignore when thinking about this option, though, is that when it comes to actors, it's in a weird window. We have a person we know, an actor, a real guy, that is King Robert, who can't, you know, we can't throw him back into the show as a 20-year younger version of himself. Same with the Lannister twins and basically everyone else. They would have to pick people that sort of looked like the actors who play the older versions of themselves, but also are great actors, so that could be a hurdle. Another choice would be The Dance of the Dragons, which is laid out in two novellas called The Princess and the Queen and The Rogue Prince. As far as popularity is concerned amongst the fandom, I think these are equally popular when compared to The Tales of Junk Dunkin' Egg. There are a couple problems with this choice, though, and the first is that it revolves around dragons. It's not just a random dragon here or there, but tons of dragons all the time. This is the period of Westeros' history where the dragon population was at its absolute peak. At least in, you know, I know someone's going to say something like, oh, well, there were ancient dragons. Yeah, but in what we know that's written down. There are two Targaryen factions that get into a civil war and both sides basically have a stable of dragons behind them. This sounds awesome, but the budget of filming this should come to mind. I mean, even though Game of Thrones is a huge success, HBO still is a business. The second concern is that these are historical reports, more or less, written down through the Maesters so the writing isn't as directly relatable to TV. I know people who love these stories will disagree, and believe me, I thoroughly enjoyed them myself. But if you really think about it, historical accounts are more fun for already invested fans. Also, there isn't really a good side and a bad side, which I think on some level is important for an ongoing series. I mean, people would likely pick a side in the war, but at the end of the day, the story's more about how they destroyed themselves through through war in general, you know, the, nobody really stands out as the good guy or the bad guy. And while this is, you know, typical in George's writing, I just don't know that it, it translate at, translates as well to TV. One last option that seems ready-made for TV would be Aegon's Conquest. How the Targaryens came to Westeros and conquered the Seven Kingdoms. This time in history has only one side with dragons, but it also has a lot of action. It wouldn't be a stretch for show only for fans to jump into this story. It's the furthest removed time-wise from the other options I've mentioned, which could be good or bad depending on how you look at it. At the same time, it's the sort of story, though, that the name alone kind of explains the whole thing. While they could definitely build these characters out and make it very watchable, my own experience is that when it's mentioned in the history, it's just a thing that happened. An important thing, but not the most legendary stuff that exists in this world. When I first read through the world of Ice and Fire, Fire, for example, like Aegon the First didn't strike me as the most interesting Targaryen king. But he's one that everyone knows and one that had a big hand in shaping the world our stories exist in right now. Beyond those, which I think are the most obvious, let me know if you think I left something out though. We start getting into wishlist territory. Like Valyria, you know, before the Doom and the Doom would be awesome. But do you think they're trying to go into such unexplored territory? I mean, there is a ton of information related to the Valerian 
playing Freehold, but is it is literally like a different world from the one that we're watching, you know, the current Game of Thrones show exist in. Of course, you could go east or you could go way back in time or you could just pick one area and talk about the, you know, how that house came to be or you could talk about the Age of Heroes and so on and so forth. I think most of the stuff in this vein is unlikely, but if you have a compelling reason why in the context of a TV show, something like that would be like the thing that makes the most sense, definitely let me know. So where do you stand on these options? Do you think it's a done deal that some prequel at all will get made? What do you think is most likely and what would your crazy wish list one be? Are any of the ones I mentioned doomed to fail as a prequel in your opinion? Anyways, thanks for watching and I hope we can get a good conversation going in, going on in the comments. There's no lack of material and ideas, but which ones are the most doable and tie in with the broader fan base and would basically end up being the best show? As mentioned, I have started a new book giveaway and I do want you to win. Or at least I want someone to win. The way it works is when I hit 28,000 subscribers, I will pick one commenter and send that person a copy of the new 20th anniversary edition of A Game of Thrones. I'll put an Amazon link in the description so you can give it a look if you haven't seen it yet, but it's illustrated and it's pretty awesome. All you have to do is be a subscriber and then leave a comment on this video or any of the other recent videos that I have where I mentioned this specific giveaway. If you're curious at how I pick the winner, go and watch my Dragonstone video because I, at the end of that one I picked the last winner. Thanks for watching, I'll talk to you soon.